Hey, welcome to a new video. The ocean is often referred to as the final frontier, a largely unknown and mysterious area that is home to some of the most unusual things on Earth. From vast expanses that can doom you to a miserable fate, to shipwrecks and mysterious lost civilizations, the ocean never fails to astonish us. Are you new to this channel? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And before we start, also like the video. The ocean can sometimes truly seem like a bottomless abyss, and this next one is proof of it. A French freediver, Yame Neri, took a dive into the darkness of Dean's Blue Hole, the largest blue water sinkhole in the world. It's no wonder his video has been viewed millions of times. Dean's Blue Hole is located on the coast of the Long Island in the Bahamas, and its deepest point is an incredible 663 feet, or 202 meters. Could you imagine what you might find down there? Kiyame described the event as a liberation, and he says that when you take this dive, it feels like escaping gravity and being able to fly free with open arms. An ancient acre, estimated to be around 2,000 years old, has recently been discovered on the seabed of the North Sea. The anchor was found by divers in an area that was once part of the Roman Empire, and it's believed to have been used by Roman ships. Despite being underwater for so long, the iron anchor was found in relatively good condition, with an estimated weight of about 2,000 pounds or 900 kilograms. This discovery provides valuable insights into the history of the North Sea areas and sheds light on the activities of ancient civilizations. Experts believe that the anchor dates back to Roman times, possibly even the Iron Age, and belonged to a Roman cargo ship that sank in the sea. This discovery also raises questions about the trade routes and shipping routes used by ancient civilizations. It also provides valuable information about the tech and materials used in shipbuilding at that time. Since the discovery, it's been decided to bring the anchor to the surface, where it will be further analyzed and studied by experts in this field. The black dragonfish is as intimidating as his name would lead you to believe, and he's also considered a top predator. He hunts a wide variety of marine animals at about 4,900 feet or 1,500 meters deep in the ocean, while few, if any, marine animals hunt him. But interestingly, the black dragonfish is only 6 inches or 15 centimeters long. Like the anglerfish, he also has a lure or barbel on his chin that can light up at the tip. It's equipped with photophores that can generate light, and it can be used both as a lure to attract prey and to signal potential mates. Its mouth also has sharp fangs, with which it can grab unsuspecting fish that come near its lure. But the real fascination of the black dragonfish is its transparent teeth. This has puzzled many researchers, and when they studied the specimens, they discovered that the teeth contain nanocrystals the size of grains that make them amazingly transparent. The Upside Down Lake, also known as Glitter Lake, is a fascinating natural phenomenon located deep within the ocean. The lake was discovered during a deep sea expedition in 2016, at a depth of 7,545 feet or 2,300 meters below the surface. What makes the lake unique is that it's actually a brine pool, meaning the water is much saltier than the surrounding ocean. This makes the water in the lake denser than the surrounding water, creating a sort of underwater lake or pool. But what truly makes the lake intriguing is its appearance. Due to the high salt content of the water, it appears to glitter and sparkle, almost like a mirror. And because the water in the lake is denser than the surrounding ocean, it appears upside down, with the lake's surface at the bottom and the lake's bottom at the top. Additionally, it hosts a variety of unique and unusual creatures, including microbial mats, tube worms, and other deep-sea organisms. Welcome to the city of Baie, also known as the sister city of Pompeii. Baie went down by the flames of the same volcanoes that struck Pompeii, only instead of being petrified and buried, Baie went down in the Bay of Naples. From 100 BC to 500 AD, Baie functioned as the Las Vegas of the world. It was where Rome's powerful elite went. Among the visitors were Nero and Caesar, who built infamous vacation villas there. But then the city sank because of the same natural volcanic eruptions they used to build spas. Now divers can explore this forgotten city and see for themselves the ruins with their still-preserved statues. In the 1970s, there was an initiative in Florida to create artificial reefs by dumping millions of tires into the ocean. The idea is that the tires would provide a substrate for corals and other marine life to grow on and create new habitats for fish and other creatures. However, the plan turned out to be a disaster. The tires quickly began to break apart and scatter across the ocean floor causing damage to natural reefs and marine ecosystems. The tires also release toxic chemicals into the water, further harming marine life and polluting nearby beaches. Today, the Osborne Tire Reef is one of the largest human-made environmental disasters in history. Despite efforts to clean up the mess, millions of tires still litter the ocean floor, posing a significant threat to marine life and the health of the ocean ecosystem. 
Like the fringing shark, the goblin shark is considered a living fossil. Its ancestors existed about 125 million years ago. It has pink skin and is often characterized by its long flat snout that resembles that of the mythical creature, the goblin. The name goblin shark actually comes from Japanese fishermen. When they accidentally caught a shark, they noticed its protruding snout and pinkish skin, which reminded them of a character in their folk tales, the Tengu or a goblin. Goblin sharks can grow to be three to four meters long. In the year 2000, the longest goblin shark ever recorded was about 6 meters long. Unlike other sharks, the goblin shark is a limp shark with a soft body that moves slowly. It feeds only on ray finned fish, cephalopods, and crustaceans that it can find near the sea floor. The SS Gersopa was a British steam cargo ship, built in 1919 by the British India Steam Navigation Company. During World War II, the ship was requisitioned by the British government and used for transporting goods and supplies across the Atlantic Ocean. On February 17, 1941, this ship was torpedoed and sunk by a German U-boat off the coast of Ireland. Of the 85 crew members on board, only one survived. The cargo of silver on board the ship had an estimated value of $210 million. The sinking of the ship was one of the largest losses of silver in maritime history. If you're interested in where the ship lies, you can find it at a depth of 3 miles or 4,700 meters on the bottom of the North Atlantic Ocean. In 2012, they recovered 48 tons of silver bars from the wreck, which were later sold for an estimated $38 million. It's not every day you find two underwater caves connected to each other containing ancient Mayan relics. A group of divers did just that, leading to the unveiling of the world's largest flooded cave. They discovered the Sakatum, a 163-mile or 263-kilometer cave system, combined with the Dos Ojos system, a 52-mile or 83-kilometer system. Earlier, the oldest human skeleton in the New World was discovered there. More than that, this cave has incredible potential to shed light on some ancient Mayan civilizations and their customs. Now that these two systems have been combined, they actually hold the key to an ancient labyrinth, which is 217 miles or 350 kilometers in length. Inside are the remains of the first settlers of the United States and Mayan cultures. The underwater cave is far from fully explored, and divers say that there is much more to discover. Gilimeno is a small island off the coast of Lombok, Indonesia, known for its beautiful beaches, coral reefs, and clear waters. One of the most interesting attractions on the island is a series of underwater sculptures just off the coast. The sculptures were created by British artist Jason DeCaris Taylor. They were made in 2017 as part of an effort to create an artificial reef ecosystem that would attract marine life and promote coral growth. One interesting fact about the sculptures is that they're made of a special type of material designed to encourage the growth of coral and other marine life. The sculptures are constructed from a pH neutral material that resembles natural rock formations and are designed to provide a substrate for coral polyps to attach and grow on it. Another interesting fact about the sculptures is that they depict various human figures, including a man and a woman sitting on a bench, a group of children playing, and a man holding a bicycle. Deep sea anglerfish are so called anglerfish because they use a lure to attract their prey. The deep sea anglerfish uses a special lure that lights up at the tip. This is because the lure is filled with bacteria that produces their own light. In this environment, where little to no sunlight reaches the water, the animals are curious and find a little light attractive. Therefore, the anglerfish is great for attracting shellfish and fish that could become its meal. In addition to the lure, the anglerfish has a very large mouth and stomach and pointed teeth. However, only the female anglerfish is blessed with illuminated lures. The males, which are usually much smaller, are not natural predators. When he finds a female, he clings to her until his own body becomes part of the females. Very unusual, but this is how deep sea anglerfish reproduce. On March 28, 2022, the Ministry of Defense of Romania announced that it had destroyed a mine found floating off the coast of the Black Sea. According to the ministry, the mine was discovered by the Romanian Navy during a routine patrol of the area and was destroyed in a controlled explosion to ensure it posed no threat to shipping or navigation in the area. There were rumors that the mine had been placed there by Ukraine as part of its efforts to deter Russian attacks during the ongoing conflict between the two countries. However, there was no confirmation of this, and it's unclear how the mine ended up in the Black Sea. The Romanian Navy has been actively patrolling the Black Sea in recent years in an effort to detect and eliminate potential threats to shipping in the area. It underscores the importance of these efforts and highlights the need for ongoing vigilance to ensure the safety of the Black Sea and its users. Could you imagine what would happen if they hadn't found it? Imagine stumbling upon what was once the most feared and terrifying weapon of the Swedish Navy. This is Mars, one of the northern Europe's most fearsome ships, which was used in the Northern Seven Years' War and sank to the bottom in 1564. Its remains were found at the bottom of the Baltic Sea near the Swedish island of Åland in 2011. 
The diver who had found the ship discovered skeletal parts, as well as guns and hand grenades. Every inch of the sunken ship shows that it didn't go down easily, and provides a glimpse of an intense battle centuries ago. At the time it sank, there were about 1,000 men on board. Now the wreck lies so deep underwater that only professional divers and ROVs can film it. Could you imagine stumbling upon such a legendary vessel? The Jacuzzi of Despair is a nickname given to the saltwater pool located at the bottom of the Gulf of Mexico, approximately 3,281 feet or 1,000 meters below the water's surface. The pool is known for its extremely high salt content, creating a toxic and deadly environment for any living organisms that enter it. It was discovered by a team of scientists studying the Gulf of Mexico in 2014. They found that the pool, which is 100 feet or 30 meters in diameter, was filled with a highly concentrated mixture of seawater and methane gas. The seawater is so dense that it sinks to the bottom of the pool, creating a toxic layer that is lethal to any animals that come into contact with it. The nickname Jacuzzi of Despair comes from the fact that it's a high temperature, with bubbling methane gas that gives impressions of a jacuzzi. However, in reality, it's much deadlier. The pool possesses a serious threat to any animals that venture close. Despite its deadly nature, it harbors some unique and unusual species of bacteria that have adapted to survive in this toxic environment. Lurking between 3,000 and 15,500 feet or 900 and 4,700 meters underwater, the tripod fish is breathtaking. In fact, it looks like it can stand at the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, you heard that right, a fish that can stand. Their bodies can grow up to 17 inches or 43 centimeters in length while their fins can reach over a meter in length. Because it can stand in the shape of a tripod, it tries to be as close to the sea floor as possible. It feeds mainly on small crustaceans, shrimp, fish, and plankton. They're sometimes called waders because of the way they stand and seem to walk. Researchers believe they must pump water into their fins to make their tripod fins stiffer so that they can stand. And when movement's detected from potential prey, they immediately grab it. The discovery of the Ries bronzes is one of the most significant and their discovery has profoundly changed our understanding of ancient Greek sculpture. They were discovered in 1972 by a sport diver on accident, off the coast of southern Italy. These sculptures had been submerged in the Mediterranean Sea for centuries, but were remarkably well preserved, with only slight damage and corrosion. They depict two warriors, one known as Statue A and the other as Statue B and are believed to have been created by two different sculptors. The statues are renowned for their incredible realism and attention to detail. You can see the muscles, veins, and bones of the figures, as everything is rendered with precision, creating a lifelike appearance that is truly remarkable. They're also quite notable for their intricate embellishments, including the use of copper and silver inlay to create impressions of eyes, lips, and teeth. One of the strangest things divers are said to ever have found were ancient medicines discovered under the water in Italy. They were pills that were completely dry and belonged to a historic wreck of the Roman shipping ship, the Relito del Pozzino. The ship sank to the bottom of the sea just off the coast of Tuscany around 120 BC, where it remained for the next two millennia. It wasn't until divers were sent down in the 1980s and 90s that the excavation began. They found rotting wood, lamps, ceramic jars, and glass cups from around Palestine, and a ruined chest belonging to an ancient Romian physician. Inside were 136 medicine bottles, a surgical hook, a mortar, and containers with dry pills inside. To their horror, closer examination revealed that the pills contained zinc compounds, pine resin, starch, beeswax, iron oxide, and other materials indicating their use. Researchers believe it must have been an eye medication or eye wash, and that someone didn't get their eye prescription 2,000 years ago. The discovery of a 900-year-old crusader sword off the coast of northern Israel is a remarkable find that sheds new light on the history of the Crusades. The sword, in excellent condition, provides valuable insights into the technology and techniques used by medieval swordsmiths and metalworkers, as well as the role played by knights in the conflict. The Crusades were a series of religious wars fought between Christians and Muslims in the Holy Land during the medieval period. Shlomi Kotzen was the person who found the 900-year-old sword. The very first crusade began in 1095 and saw Christian armies recapture Jerusalem from Muslim control in 1099. In the ensuing two centuries, a series of other crusades were launched, with varying degrees of success and failure. The study of the sword by experts will help us learn more about its origin and the history of the crusades. It may also lead to new discoveries about the conflict and the people who participated in it. Additionally, it's also expected to become a major tourist attraction, drawing visitors from around the world. The stargazer fish has a pair of huge eyes on top of its head. This makes them always seem to be looking up instead of straight ahead. They're great at ambushing their prey. 
Two characteristics are responsible for the great hunting skills. First is their venom and second is their electric shock. To surprise their prey, they bury themselves in the sand. And when they see a potential prey passing by, they grab their victim with their sharp teeth. But sometimes when chewing is not enough, they use their two large poisonous spines to pierce their prey, or generate electricity of 50 volts to stun their prey. These venomous skills are also their great weapons against fending off their own predators. How did we miss an entire island near a city? Recently, Google Maps has shown what appears to be an underwater island in the Arabian Sea, near the city of Kochi in the southern Indian state, Kerala. The discovery was made by a group of researchers using Google Earth to study the coastline of India. The island appears to be a circular structure with a diameter of approximately 164 feet or 50 meters, located at a depth of about 394 feet or 120 meters. This location is about 6.2 miles or 10 kilometers off the coast of Kochi and has been named Sri Padmavathi Island by the researchers. The discovery of the underwater island has piqued the interest of scientists and geologists who are studying the phenomenon to better understand geological processes. Some experts believe that its formation may be the result of an underwater volcanic eruption, while others suggest it could be the result of sedimentary or glacial deposition. The USS Saratoga was a sight to behold. The ship was 879 feet, or 268 meters long, and weighed about 39,000 tons. It was one of the U.S. Navy's first aircraft carriers. The USS Saratoga features a naval history and participated in battles ranging from the attacks on Pearl Harbor to the Battle of Iwo Jima. During its lifetime, the ship, nicknamed Sarah, endured fires on the hangar deck, two starboard bomb blasts, and numerous torpedoes. It then served as a target for Operation Crossroads, testing nuclear weapons. It survived the first test, but the second brought it to its knees. Now divers can find it at a depth of 170 feet, or 52 meters, in the lagoon of Bikini Atoll. Finding and exploring it's like walking through a graveyard, especially considering that the cockpit is buried under 2 million tons of coral and sand due to the explosion. In November 2022, an underwater mammoth tusk was discovered at a depth of approximately 10,000 feet, or 3,000 meters below the ocean's surface. The tusk was found off the coast of Nova Scotia, Canada, by a team of researchers. This particular tusk is believed to belong to a woolly mammoth that lived over 10,000 years ago during the last ice age. The discovery of the tusk is significant because it provides new insights into the distribution of mammoths during the last ice age. It's also a testament to the resilience of the woolly mammoth, which could survive in various environments, including the frigid waters of the North Atlantic Ocean. Researchers used a remotely operated vehicle to explore the ocean floor and discovered the tusk embedded in the sediment. It was carefully removed and brought to the surface for further study. At this moment, we know that the deep sea is still largely unexplored, and there is much to discover about the creatures and ecosystems that exist in great depths. But mammoth tusks? That's a new one. This is the black swallowfish, and it's so named because it can swallow fish much larger than itself. It's found in all parts of the ocean around the world at depths of 650 to 9,000 feet, or 200 to 2,745 meters, and is only a small fish. It can grow to only 10 inches or 25 centimeters, which makes it all the more surprising that it can devour larger prey. Its body has no scales, its head is long, and its snout is round. It mainly targets bony fish, which it can swallow whole. Sometimes it can gorge itself on large animals that are twice as long and even 10 times as heavy as its mass, because it has not only a large mouth, but also a large stomach. But the black swallowfish can sometimes get too greedy. If he's hunting big fish, there's a good chance he won't be able to digest fast enough before the fish starts to decompose. And that can lead to his own end. Fort Drum in the Philippines, also known as the Concrete Battleship, is a fortified structure built by the United States in 1909 as part of the harbor defense of Manila Bay. The structure is designed to resemble a battleship, complete with gun turrets and a command tower. It's also constructed with reinforced concrete to withstand enemy fire. During World War II, Fort Drum played a significant role in the defense of Manila Bay. When Japanese forces invaded the Philippines in 1941, Fort Drum was one of the four forts in the bay that resisted the enemy for several months. Despite bombardment by the Japanese artillery and torpedoes, Fort Drum remained intact and continued to fire on enemy positions until the end of the war. Today, it's become a popular tourist attraction and a reminder of the military history of the Philippines. Visitors can explore the interior of the fort, which features a maze of tunnels and rooms, as well as its gun emplacements and observation decks. Stories of ancient sailors reporting the Kraken haunting their ships and similar tales are often dismissed by us. But what about this mysterious World War I attack? What we know so far is that the wreck of a German U-boat sank to the bottom just off the coast of Stranraer in South Scotland. 
The wreck was found when engineers were exploring the one billion euro project designed to lay undersea power cables between England and Scotland. Instead, they discovered a hundred-year-old U-boat, strangely intact. According to folklore, the vessel had been attacked by a sea monster. According to Captain Kretsch, the commander of the U-boat, a sea monster had appeared when they came to the surface to recharge their batteries. The sea creature reportedly had large eyes, a horned skull, and teeth that glinted in the moonlight. According to the story, the captain and his crew fired at the beast until it finally retreated into the water. Adams Bridge, better known as Ramasetu, is a natural limestone sandbar formation that connects India and Sri Lanka. It's garnered significant attention due to its historical, scientific, and mythological significance. The bridge is mentioned in the Hindu epic Ramayana, adding to its cultural importance. Scientifically, there's been an ongoing debate for some time about the origin of Ramasetu. Some argue that it's a naturally formed geological feature, while others believe that it's man-made. However, geological evidence suggests that the bridge was once a land connection between India and Sri Lanka, but was damaged by a cyclone in the 15th century. Over time, the landmass re-emerged, creating small islands and sandbanks. The bridge spans approximately 31 miles or 50 kilometers and separates the Gulf of Manor from the Palk Strait. It consists of natural mineral sandbanks and coral reefs, and the sea around the structure is shallow. Several scientific studies have been conducted to determine its age, with some estimates suggesting it's approximately 7,000 years old. Sea spiders are not true spiders, but marine anthropods. With over 1,300 species, they're found in the oceans all around the world. The fascinating thing about sea spiders are their incredibly long legs on a very small body. Some have four pairs of legs, while other species have five or six pairs. Their legs can absorb gases that are transferred to their bodies by diffusion. For this reason, they don't need a respiratory system. They also do not have a real head, but only a head-like part, called a cephalosoma. Despite living in the dark, deep waters, they possess beautiful pigments that brighten their bodies and legs from yellow stripes to purple and red. Sea spiders have an interesting way of reproducing and raising their offspring. The male can carry the eggs in a structure called ovaries. And even after the larvae hatch, the offspring are kept by the spider to protect them from predators. What if we told you that there are tens of thousands of barrels potentially contaminated with DDT off the coast of California? But what is DDT, you might be wondering? It's a pesticide that was banned in the United States in 1972 due to environmental issues and health risks. It's believed that the barrels off the coast of California contain DDT-contaminated industrial waste, and they were discovered during an extensive mission focused on mapping the area. A scientist named David Valentine documented these industrial barrels as far back as 2011. The recent mission led by Eric Terrell of the Scripps Institution of Oceanography revealed the presence of over 25,000 barrels that may contain DDT-contaminated waste. Scientists involved in the expedition said that the density of the barrels far exceeded expectations. The discovery raises concerns about the impact on marine life, as well as potential risks to human health from consuming contaminated seafood. The high occurrence of cancer in adult sea lions in the area is believed to be caused by the presence of these barrels. Scientists also warn that as these barrels deteriorate, the waste could end up in the environment and in the food chain. This next topic has to be one of the most baffling, unsolved mysteries of all time. What happened to the $330,000 underwater research station off the coast of Germany that disappeared without a trace? The last report sent by the Boknesek Observatory was around 8 p.m. in late August. And then came radio silence. Naturally, the scientists immediately sent divers to investigate. When the divers arrived at the site, they saw that the entire research station had disappeared, and all that remained was a shredded fiber optic cable. So, what could have happened? According to the story, the research station was in forbidden waters, an area where even local fishermen were not allowed to go. Some people claim that sea monsters took the research station to the depths of the ocean. Perhaps a creature the size of the Kraken did this. However, the lost data on environmental conditions in the area would have been priceless. A UFO enthusiast named Scott Waring claims to have discovered a fleet of UFOs. Here's some more info about this case. According to Scott, he discovered a fleet of UFOs off the coast of Greece using Google Earth. He provides specific coordinates for the alleged sighting and estimates the smallest object to be approximately 262 feet or 80 meters wide. Additionally, he speculates that UFOs have been present since 2016, but have become more visible in recent years. He suggests that the objects may be part of a small fleet connected to the Greek coastline 
with a larger group of objects appearing even larger than the original sighting. He also mentions rumors of an alien base beneath the Italian castle Rocopia near Greece. Do you believe that this is indeed a fleet of UFOs? If so, what are extraterrestrial beings doing in the ocean? And if we dive deep enough and in the right place, will we find not Atlantis, but a city full of extraterrestrial beings? He may look more like an eel, but the frilled shark is a real shark. His bizarre appearance can be attributed to his primitiveness. That is, he has not undergone many changes since his earliest time of existence. As such, it's also considered a living fossil, because it has no living close relatives. The fringing shark gets its name from its six gill slits, and it lives between 2,000 and 3,300 feet, or 600 and 1,000 meters underwater. But at night, it sometimes comes to the surface to feed. The fringing shark may look old, but its jaw is as fearsome as that of a great white shark. It has a total of 3,000 trident-shaped teeth and 25 rows facing backwards. In 2007, a Japanese fisherman caught a fringing shark that he thought was an eel with terrifying teeth. It was taken to an aquarium in the Awashima Marine Park, where it unfortunately died a few days later. Satellite images have confirmed the existence of a mysterious phenomenon known as the Milky Sea. This glowing phenomenon in the ocean has long been reported by sailors, but was only recently clearly documented thanks to satellite sensors. The images show an extensive area of the Indian Ocean, roughly the size of Connecticut, glowing for three consecutive nights. Scientists have limited knowledge about the conditions that led to the formation of these Milky Seas. A leading hypothesis suggests that bioluminescent bacteria may be responsible for the glow. Unlike other bioluminescent organisms that produce short flashes of light, these these bacteria emit light continuously. However, the high concentration of bacteria required to produce such light remains a mystery. Milky seas seem to be the most common in the Indian Ocean, especially near trade routes in Indonesia. However, there may be other areas yet to be discovered where this phenomenon occurs. The study of this phenomenon highlights how little we know about the vast and mysterious depths of our oceans. Be careful what catches your eye when scuba diving. In the depths of Cumbria's Lake District, the deepest lake in northwest England, there's an underwater garden hidden of gnomes. Usually, the water there is attractive to divers because of its clarity, the rare freshwater sponges nearby, and the beautiful cliffs in the near distance. The mysterious thing about this place is that over the years, a secret garden of garden gnomes has grown up there, each posing at the bottom of the lake. They're still there to this day, even though the authorities have done their best to remove them. In the mid-1990s, three divers lost their lives in the same waters. But every time the authorities try to get rid of the gnomes, they mysteriously are reinstated. The K-278, a Soviet-era nuclear submarine that sank in the Norwegian Sea in 1989, has been found to have radiation levels significantly higher than normal. It sank after a fire in the engine room, resulting in the loss of 42 crew members. Norwegian scientists have studied the area around the sunken submarine and detected radiation levels approximately 800,000 times higher than expected. The elevated radiation levels raise concerns about the potential long-term threat the submarine may pose, even after 30 years underwater. Despite the alarming radiation readings, researchers have stated that the radiation does not pose an immediate threat to nearby fishing or scientific activities. The depth of the submarine, approximately 5,000 feet or 1.5 kilometers underwater greatly reduces the risk of contamination in the food chain. Nevertheless, no one would recommend getting close to the submarine. Samples taken at a ventilation port showed particularly high radiation levels, indicating a possible connection to the submarine's nuclear reactor. But it's not just that which could potentially leak radiation. The submarine also had two torpedoes with a plutonium tip. This is the vampire squid that literally comes from hell. And just by looking at it, you can guess how it got its name. The vampire squid is blackish with red colors. These are also the colors associated with the mythical creature, the vampire. It also possesses multiple arms that together resemble the cape of a vampire. The vampire squid can grow up to 12 inches or 30 centimeters long. And this deep sea creature was first discovered in the late 1890s by zoologist Carl Kuhn, who wanted to confirm whether there really is life in the depths of the ocean. But don't let the vampire squid's name fool ya because it's not really a squid. Although it has eight arms and two tentacles like all other squids, the vampire squid belongs to its own order. The Vampyromorphida. Another interesting feature is the large eyes. Relative to their body size, they probably have the largest eyes of any animal. The sunken city of Cuba is a discovery of underwater structures found off the coast of Cuba. These structures were located by Canadian and Cuban researchers using sonar and video equipment. They estimate that the structures must be around 6,000 years old and exhibit shapes and symmetrical designs that suggest they were made by humans rather than natural formations. The discovery has fueled speculation about a possible connection between the sunken city of Cuba and Atlantis. 
Over the years, many places have been proposed as the location of Atlantis, and the Cuban discovery adds to the ongoing debate. The underwater city in Cuba also bears similarities to Megalus found at Stonehenge or Easter Island, and some experts suggest resemblance to the pyramids built by the Maya and Aztec civilizations. In addition, inscriptions of an unknown language have been found that have not yet been deciphered. Researchers speculate that Cuba and Mexico have been connected by a land bridge in the past, which could explain the similarities in architectural styles. What's also intriguing is that the location of the sunken city is at the base of a mud volcano. Historically, ancient civilizations often choose to build cities near volcanoes due to the fertile land they provided. For more than half a millennium, this medieval ship has been under the surface of the water. The monster figurehead belongs to a wreck discovered in the 1970s in the Baltic Sea near Ronby, Sweden. The most striking feature is the one that must have given divers the fright of their lives. The figurehead, a dragon-like sea creature with the ears of a lion and the mouth of a crocodile. The story behind it is quite impressive. The figurehead was once attached to a 15th century ship called the Grips Hunden. The ship belonged to none other than the Denmark's King John. It participated in many wars, but it was lost on its journey from Copenhagen to Kalmar on the east coast of Sweden after it caught fire. Here it remained until one day it was found by divers. Today it's hailed as one of the best preserved medieval ships in history. The Trapping Zone is a recently discovered ecosystem, located at a depth of 1,640 feet or 500 meters in the Indian Ocean, specifically in the Maldives. It's been described as an oasis of life amidst an extensive ocean desert. Scientists from the University of Oxford came across this unique ecosystem during the Necton Maldives mission, which aimed to explore the deep sea around the Maldives and collect samples. This zone is characterized by a rocky underwater landscape that acts as a trap for small marine organisms, known as micronectin. Micronectin can swim independently of the current and migrate between the ocean's surface and the deep sea. At night, they run to sunlit shallows to feed on phytoplankton, and during the day, they dive back into deeper waters to predators. However, at a depth of 1,640 feet or 500 meters, micronectin become ensnared against the underwater terrain of the trapping zone. This place serves as an ideal feeding ground for predators, including a vast number of sharks, like the tiger, nurse, sand tiger, thresher, gulper, hammerhead, and rare bramble shark. All these species are drawn to the zone to feast on the abundance of micronectin. This is the gulper eel. It looks like any other common eel, except it has an extremely large mouth that's wide enough to swallow a fish larger than itself. Its hinged mouth can simply swallow its prey in the water and expel the water through its gills. This way of feeding is also quite similar to that of a pelican eel. This way of feeding is also quite similar to that of the pelican eel. This fish is black in color and the long narrow body can reach up to a meter in length. They lurk in the ocean at depths of about 1,640 to almost 10,000 feet, or 500 to 3,000 meters. Shellfish, fish, and cephalopods make up their main diet, but in addition to its large mouth, the gulper fish has something else fascinating. Namely, it has a long whip-like tail, and at the end of it is an intricate organ with several tentacles that can glow from pink to bright red and are meant to lure and attract its prey. In 2018, a team of scientists discovered a strange yellow brick road in a previously unexplored area of the Pacific Ocean. The discovery was made during a deep sea expedition, using advanced underwater robots and cameras. What they found is actually a series of unusual sponge-like structures that appear to be made of glass. However, the structures are arranged in a pattern that resembles a road, hence the nickname. Scientists were initially puzzled by the discovery, as they had never seen anything like it before. There have been various speculations about a possible connection between the yellow brick road discovered in the Pacific Ocean and the mythical city of Atlantis. Experts have officially identified the formation as a broken flow of hyoclastite rock, which is essentially volcanic rock that has been broken by the interaction of lava with water or ice. Further analysis of the structures revealed that they are composed of various minerals, including silica and calcium carbonate. The structures also appear to be home to several unusual and previously unknown deep sea creatures, including various types of crabs and shrimp. Have you ever found anything in the ocean? Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos we've made, click one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.